I'm going to ask uh, facilitators or Ann, come on up. Uh, facilitators or facilitator representatives to uh, grab a mic. I think these things are live. Mike, would you tell us one, two, or three things that came forward as, as great? Uh, point. Shh. All right, Mike Lovett from Hi. Uh, the, uh, we were in the Green, Green Harbor. Harbor Group, and our, our real focus is water quality. So the things that we thought about and, and what we've seen as a result of Sandy and, uh, and the Nor'easter really evolve around how might we change the city's view of how infrastructure is built to limit the threats that it generates for water quality. Should we continue to have oil tanks in the basements of buildings? What happens to the water that gets pumped out of the subway tunnels? Is it dumped straight into the harbor without any processing? Uh, how do we deal with water management in general? That's one thing. The second one was, here is a, a, a unique opportunity. It, it might appear a little bloodthirsty, but it is an opportunity to seriously consider repurposing the waterfront around the city of New York in a manner which has not been seen since the Dutch landed and bought out the Indians. Are those places that have experienced significant damage <clears throat> now a, a, a suitable place to think about as open space where inundation or, or a significant flood event doesn't cause a significant threat to human health and public safety and, and the economic consequences of having to restore them. So we have a, a shopping list of ideas that move around that concept, but looking at water quality within the harbor in the wake of these kinds of events. That's it. Thank you, Mike. All right. Anne, you want to go next for uh, Harbor Ed? So we spoke about education, and our conversation went on a couple of different lines. One was the importance of uh, distinguishing between education for students in the city, uh, in terms of public schools and the like, and then the education for the community and the public at large, and where those two things overlap. Uh, and some of the commonalities between those two areas were the importance of the tactile experience for everyone. So in terms of student education uh, in classrooms and in subjects, you know, how do we get them out to the harbor, to the water? How do we possibly institutionalize that in the lower grades for elementary school and middle school? Uh, moving forward, talking about the next mayoral, mayoral candidate, how do we keep uh, educational reform um, and the good work that's already been done on the forefront of the mayor's agenda. Um, uh, continuing with the idea of tactile experience, uh, the importance of getting adult, adults involved in the work that's going on around the city. So if we are planting more wetlands, getting the community members out to be part of that and to understand why we're doing it and what pieces of it we're doing and how it works. So across the board, uh, tactile experience. Of course, many of us are from uh, organizations, community organizations that get people out recreationally. So that's a wonderful segue uh, to get people involved. And so also on the candidate platform, you know, continued support, financial and otherwise, uh, for those missions. Uh, another important thing that came up educationally is uh, the idea of the commons. Um, how do we create common places to do all kinds of things, to meet in emergencies, uh, to go and find information, to know that there's information available. Uh, what kinds of places in our city can we use for that? The schools, again a crossover, is the choice that many of us went to this time with emergency shelters and the like. Um, also in terms of the commons and information, uh, how can we use those places to be better prepared in terms of 
bringing alternate energy to those places like solar power and other forms so that we can be sure that the common spaces that we rely on are working and I think that finally uh, there was uh, a lot of reiteration of the importance uh, moving forward of really working, looking, and thinking locally. Knowing your neighbors, uh, getting the word out among the people around you in terms of education, um, and I think that pretty much sums it up. All right, thank That's you, a great Anne. group. All right, who's that? Peggy, you want to go next? Hi, so ours was the uh, water recreation group and we had a lively discussion with a lot of recommendations for MWA. Um, but I think the main thing we wanted to say to candidates were that the mayor's done a pretty good job and we want to continue uh, in that path. Of course, we know that new candidates want to do their own branding and I think there are a lot of organizations that are thinking about ways to really develop a, a mandate and an agenda for the next candidates and I know MWA is a part of that. I think one of the messages that came out of uh, the storm was that low-tech parks work and they're a great benefit and that the waterfront parks um, have been a, a great benefit and a buffer for for so many communities. So they work, they are um, efficient, and the low-tech parks work just as well. Um, we also had some recommendations for the use of, of solar uh, rather than electrical lines at, at our parks. Of course, there are recommendations like floating dark docks that would provide uh, inland access uh, of boat trailers as well as as ramps for um, for boats to to dock uh, along the um, the waterways. One thing that we talked about that I think was important for MWA was more significant and direct messaging, um, overall messages, unified messages to the member groups. A lot of member groups um, have activities at the waterfront. They're providing their own messaging um, that really helps their own organizations, but they'd appreciate stronger unified messaging, those one or two points that they could deliver along with their own um, organizational messages. Uh, so again, consistent marketing with a unified message. Um, other ideas like adopt a park, um, how we can use Water Day to really um, provide uh, and develop stronger stewardship and volunteer stewardship um, at our parks. Again, um, more press and uh, the idea that we have air quality reports on the nightly news or the morning news. Why don't we start um, developing water quality reports? And water quality reports that um, aren't the negative ones that keep people from from going out into the water, but positive ones that talk about it's a great day for boating or swimming uh, or getting out on the water. And again, that's something that MWA can do. Uh, again, um, I guess one last point is how we create revenue to really support uh, every community park because we know that the city um, does not always have the money to do that and we not know that not all communities have the, um, the, I guess, the capacity to do the friends of and raise that revenue that some communities do. So how could MWA really begin to um, bring some uh, corporate folks to the table with communities, do some workshops to train communities how they can begin to raise revenue and be strong stewards 